Hello there, and welcome to this Spring Development course. So, today we're going to be going over exactly what Spring is, where it fits into the whole idea of enterprise Java development, and, you know, what exactly we're going to be going over in this course, or at least in the next couple of lessons, at least. So, for starters, let's actually go to Spring to start uh, to Spring.io. Yeah, Spring.io. There we go. And uh, this is the official site for Spring. So this is the official website where, you know, all, all, all Spring news and everything is um, posted. So we can actually now go to projects. And you'll see there are quite a bit of projects in Spring. Um, a lot of them are very useful and a lot of them are very important as well. I, I, I really wouldn't say that Spring has anything that isn't useful uh, since it is it is a pretty good framework and uh, it is a pretty good bundle of technologies as a whole but uh yeah so today we're going to be going over the spring uh framework so just the spring framework um this is the sort of uh meat and potatoes of spring i would say um it's really what uh is most often used in every single spring application so if you're if you're creating a spring application this is most likely what you're going to be using everything else sort of is a plug and play sort of so uh, another important thing that we're going to just talk a little bit about is Spring Boot. So Spring Boot is actually a little bit of a different story altogether, but it actually builds upon what we do in this course together. So Spring Boot is sort of everything after whatever we learn together. So it sort of it it, it simplifies what we what we'll be learning in this course. So let's go and go to Spring Framework in, in general. So there's a quick introduction. You can read it if, if you want. Um, and the important thing here is features. So we're going to really focus on dependency injection and Spring MVC as well. So Spring MVC is uh, actually stands for Spring Model View Controller. So Spring Model View Controller is an idea of separating an application into three parts. The model, which is the data access, the view, which is uh, the front end, so what the person sees, and then the controller, which sort of intermingles the two, so it connects them, sort of. So we're going to be going over into exactly what MVC means and how it works later on, but we're going to start with dependency injection, what that is, so what a bean is, and so on and so on. So yeah, so this has just been a quick overview of the Spring Framework and what we're going to be learning in this course. Uh, just a quick note as well, uh, the prerequisites for this course are uh, just knowledge of Java and core Java as well as you do need some basic knowledge of servlets and Java, you know, uh, web development sort of. Uh, if you don't know web development then that I guess I guess you could sort of pick it up as we go along, but you definitely need to know Java development uh, if if you are going to be sort of following along in this course. What's also nice to have would be Maven knowledge, since we are going to be using Maven in this course. I know that we could just use jars, just, you know, manually add them. But I'd say in 95% of the project they're going to be working on uh, in, uh, in professional development, there is going to be Maven. So in 95% of the projects, there is going to be Maven. And in the 5% that there aren't, you're going to be wishing that there are that there is Maven, uh, since after you have a couple hundred jars and you got a couple dozen problems with the jars, you're definitely going to be thinking, "I, I wish I'd used Maven." So yeah, okay. So anyway, uh, this has been just a quick overview of Spring and the course, and uh, I'll see you next time. Till soon. Hello there, and welcome back to the Spring Development course. So. Last time, we took a general look at what exactly Spring is, how it works, what we can use it for, and so on. Today, we're going to really be diving deep into how we can create a Spring application. Now, at this point, we really haven't gone over much. We don't know what a bean is, what is IOC containers, and so on and so on. So what we're going to be creating, you may seem it may seem like I'm doing something crazy that I haven't gone over, and that's a little bit the idea. So you're going to see exactly what we build, and then later on, as we start to learn more about how exactly Spring works, you're going to think, oh, so that's what that does. And in result, you'll get a better understanding of exactly what's going on. All right, so today we're going to be going over um, exactly how we could download our IDE that we're going to use to develop our applications. So we're going to be downloading Eclipse. Let's go ahead and download it. We're going to go to eclipse.org. 
And there we go. That's going to take us to the main page. As you can see, Oxygen came out just just recently. Um, so now we can download it. We just click download, and this will take you to the download page. It'll automatically give you the best, you know, location for where you're going to download it. Let's go and download. All right, there we go, and it's going to start downloading. So this will take quite a bit. Um, let me go ahead and actually pause the video while it's downloading, and then I'll come back to it when it actually finishes. All right, there we go. It's done. So now we can go ahead and open it up. Any day now. All right, there we go, and, and then it should actually give you this Eclipse installer. Um, it should have actually... Okay, there we go, there it is, uh, downloads folder. So now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, open up Eclipse installer. All right, it'll go ahead and open it up. All right, here we go, and we're gonna click on Eclipse IDE for Java EE developers. Let's go ahead and click on it. It's gonna select an installation folder, just you know, you could use the default and install and delete and install. So here as well, let me go ahead and pause the course and then I'll unpause it once it installs. Here we go, it finished downloading and now we can just do launch. All right, and it'll go ahead and launch it for us. Any day now, this is all taking very long. All right, I think I'm gonna pause it here as well and wait until something changes. Oh, nope, there we go, it changed quite perfectly. Okay, so now you're gonna select a workspace. At this point, you should know what a workspace is, just where our, all our project files will be. And launch. Again, taking some time. Any day now. All right, and there we go. Okay, let me go to now. Remove what I have so far here. Don't really know why. I have it here. Let's delete it. All right, and there we go. All right, so we're going to get started with Eclipse. Uh, maybe some, uh, we're going to be doing Maven as well. Getting to know that as well. So first of all, let's go ahead and switch our perspective. So we're going to do Window. Uh, Perspective, open perspective, other, and then select Java EE and open that up. There we go. All right. So now we're in a, in a different perspective. Just need to do that. All right. Now we should be able to do file, new, and Maven project. So let's do that. All right. There we go. Uh, we're going to create a simple project. Uh, use the default, default workspace location. Just click next. We're going to insert a, insert a group ID. So the way Maven projects work is that all projects have a group and an artifact ID. We can just put group and artifact. Group, artifact. There we go. So now we can just finish. All right, there we go. So now we have the our Maven project. So if you don't know how Maven project works, every single Maven project has this pom.xml file. And this pom.xml file, if we can open it, there we go. Um, it, it'll actually first give you an overview. So a pom.xml file is just like any other XML file, um, except uh, Maven reads it, and then from there it can install certain plugins or dependencies and so on and so on. So we can go to the raw pom, and you can see exactly what's going on here. So first we have our group ID and our artifact ID, as well as our version. And here we can actually start to add some configuration. So we can add some dependencies by doing dependencies. 
dependencies. There we go. And here we can actually insert some dependencies. So right now I'm going to insert the spring dependencies. All right, here we go. So the first one is going to be just spring core. So let me go ahead and actually format it. You can do shift control F or shift command F if you're on a Mac to format it, then save it up. Okay. All right, now we can go ahead and actually start using our spring file. So we, you, know, you can actually now see uh, there's a Maven dependencies uh, file, or I guess section here, where you can actually see exactly the jars that it installed. So it's, it's installed Spring Core and Spring JCL. So we're going to go ahead and actually create a Spring file. First of all, let's go, to, let's go ahead and create a new uh, package. And this is going to be com.example dot, let's just say, um, pkg. All right, there we go. So now we're going to create a new Java file, a class, I'm sorry. So the class will be um, sample bean. All right, then we can do public static void main and finish up. And okay, so here, what are we going to do? So first of all, what we're going to do is actually go back to our palm.xml file because I completely forgot that we also need spring context in order for our very first application to work. Okay, there we go. So now we're going to go ahead and remove this. All right, so it should just build the project. Let's save it. And now we can do application context uh, C equals new application context. Let's actually conform to Java coding conventions here. Once again, let me actually go ahead and import it. There we go. Uh, let's do application context. There we go. And now we can do, instead of new application context, we're going to do new uh, class path, class path, and then I think XML application context. Yeah, class path XML, and then this is from capital letter. Class path, class path XML application context. And now we can write XML as like that. There we go. Can I not really remember the name. All right, there we go. Okay, and now we just need to import the name of our XML file. Again, this will all be, make sense in a second here. And so now we can do um, beans.xml. All right, there we go. So uh, at this point, we've named this sample bean. Let's actually name this application start. Start. Since we are going to have a different uh, sample bean, uh, let's rename the compilation unit. There we go. So now we actually got, are going to create a new class called, let's just say, point. There we go. Uh, let's check main. All right. So our point will actually be a bean. We actually don't need main. I don't know why I checked it. And here we actually create some values. So we can do uh, int x, int y, and then just generate getters and setters as well. So uh, source, generate getters and setters. There we go, x, y. And then we can do OK. All right, there we go. So now we have our uh, bean. Let's do this private as well. There we go. Okay, so now we have our bean. All right, so now our next step will be to create our beans.xml file, but that's going to be the, in the next lesson. So uh, I, it's better, it's best to keep this these lessons a little shorter so that you know you can understand it. Uh, just go along, uh, sort of. How can I say this? Steps, sort of. So your job for now is just to get this working on your machine. So it's not actually going to work if I try to run it right now. It'll actually give me an error. Yeah, as you can see, it can't find the beans.xml file. But um, your job is to get it working so that there's so that it, it can import application context and then just get the point working as well. And then in the next time, we're going to go over exactly how we can install our bean.xml file and how we can get it working as well. So anyway, um, I'll see you next time. Till soon.